Welcome. It's been a while, but that's okay. We're back. We are November 6th today, and we're just starting to get ready to pack up the truck there. We're going to get the freezer in the back. We're going to do something different this year and uh, do a little bit more of an intro video than we usually do. So I'll walk through and um, show my little pack up there. Kind of already got everything in the backpack and everything stored away where it's uh, going to go there, but just in the middle of finishing off some stew we're going to try and bring as much food as we can this year because of the covid and all that we are not going to restaurants or anything like that we are going to stick straight to the, our motel or our camp whatever we're actually doing up there we're going to start in the motel we'll see where it goes we're going to do a little tour around here for a little bit uh maybe show you a couple of my mounts a couple antlers in the room there and then uh we're gonna head over to trev's check out his he's got his big muleys and euro mounted in his uh living room there and he's gonna be doing packing all day today same with ray so we're going to go see him. We'll check out the last year's 191. He's on the wall now. He uh, We got him back by, uh, oh, a month and a half ago or something. He got him back, hung him on the wall next to uh, Woody there. So we got Woody and Girth Brooks right next to each other. So you'll be like to see that. Boots not packed yet, but we're getting there. So we got garbage bag protecting the main stuff that's going to go in the back. The truck's not as big as it usually is, so we got limited room in the cab. But this backpack full of spotting scope, trail cameras, laptop, card readers, batteries, rest of the clothes in there, boot dryer in the back. And then we'll head upstairs. So I'm limited on space in the upstairs there, but this is what we got upstairs. That's a 2012 Whitetail from Alberta that I got uh, when my sister was living over there. We had one of her friends, Hunter, host us since we're not residents. And um, I was able to get that buck. So that's been on the wall for a while. This guy, we'll take some hats off him, was my biggest mule deer to date before the one to the left mounted there. And these guys are actually very similar size. This one's just got the frame I've been waiting for. Nice frame on him. Again, not crazy scoring deer. Girth Brooks and Woody are bigger than these guys are, but that's okay. This is what I can have managed to accomplish so far in my life. So that's just fine and dandy, I thought. All right, we'll hang these guys back up here. But we got the stew ready to rock there, ready to go into its little totes. We got our coffee. Got to pack food up pretty quick here to put in the freezer. And this is the old sunroom here. You've probably seen this before in old shed hunting videos, but this mainly just has all my good sheds in here. Deadhead, sheds, a couple hats, hammock to kind of hang out. Those are my trophy sheds from last year that I'm just pumped on. And they I can't put them in a pile because i got to be able to grab them and look at them every now and then. And then here's just three of the better sets that I've found. Newer and better sets that I've found around here. A pretty nice bowl right there. But I'll go and show you a couple of the black tails. These are some of the blacktails from around here. A couple of them are off island. Actually, most of them are off island. But a few of them are actually on the island. So there's a couple nice blacktails we've got there. This is a little shrine I made for my grandpa that had passed away last December. Got a couple um, bucktails and flies hanging on my backpack to maybe bring me some luck this year. And there's a couple other blacktails. Those are all uh, off Vancouver Island. Region 2, Region 1, but off island. So that's what we're doing so far. Hopefully we can add another muley to the pile coming up here. It would be pretty awesome. So anyway, that's it for my place. Let's go. All right, we're here. At Trevor's place. Got a few of my things in there. We're coming for the freezer. Let's see how he's making out. Hi, Stella. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? We're in. It smells like stain in here. Yeah, I'll stain the boards down. Stain your board? There he is. What's up? What's up? Trevor's uh, checking in here. This is his room. Not bad. You getting excited? He got, he got, it hit him a couple years ago, probably five years ago, and he hasn't been able to go out and yield your hunt without coming home with something. So that's, <laughs> that's where you see it. Oh yeah, I'm all packed up. Is that a freezer already to rock? Almost. Almost? We're just starting to switch stuff over. We want to get the other one frozen first. Look at that thing. You in here? Here is the inside. River Rock Fireplace. 
And over here, is Woody on the right, Girth Brooks on the left. Turned out pretty dang good. Hey, Ray. What's up? How you doing? Excuse the mess. You're all packing up here? <laughs> I'm working on it. Good. I'm working on it. Got all your stuff ready? We leave in 12 and a half hours. Excuse me, tw amazing, 12 hours and 15 minutes. It's amazing how much time it takes to, I know. to prepare. It's crazy. You know, they're working on my truck, cleaning the truck out, cleaning all that stuff. And then you get the little vibes. I'm driving over here. I'm just music off, listening to any little tick in the truck before you go, even though it's probably totally fine. Anything you hear is in your head. I know. But it's all good. Yeah, there he is. Don't forget that one. There's Girth. Girth, Brooks, and Woody. All right, here's the downstairs pool room. Little TV I center. I had all my hunting stuff out there. That's the good. Four or five days. And go put now it in a tote. Gonna, now I'm going to put it in the tote along with all those balsa branches. Perfect. Come Perfect. Come to my a little bit. All right, so there's my Christmas present to Ray last year. Big canvas of uh, Girth Brooks there. That was a, a find. That was not a shot. That was a find, wasn't it? Or did you? Yeah. Yeah, you found that. I love these white ones. Are yeah. Another found, found, deadhead. found deadheads. Just put them up there kind of deal. But we'll start here. This is a, a duo bucks we got when I was 12 years old. We built a small cabin out on some of these remote islands out here. And that's where those guys came from. That was uh, his biggest buck to date until I don't know which one actually beat that one. It might even have been this guy. That's actually a pretty good size three point right there for mule deer. But anyway, we got this guy. Again, a lot of these aren't on any of the videos. This is before we did the YouTube and the filming part. These are a couple nice mule deer. That's a real heavy two by four or two by three by five, whatever you want to call them there. But that's a really nice heavy buck. I remember that one too. That was a good buck. He had some, uh, some some injuries on his body from possibly being hit by a train or something we're thinking but there's a good one that's another bought one and then that's another nice buck and if anybody here knows anything about the vancouver island blacktail quite a few of these come from there and close this one actually came from right behind this house but yeah there's some beauties up there a lot of these actually were donated by my grandpa that passed away last december Yeah, two of them are, eh? Picked these up two years ago. Laying side by side. Yeah. I'd be happy with a buck like that. Heck yeah, that's a nice buck. Let's see these extras up here. Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah. He's got to be 180. Yeah, he's got to be around there. I think we actually grow some around that, giving him a main beam for his inside spread. Right. Pretty cool. We're here. If I had my camera, I'd be at my little one. I'd be able to zoom in on that. Well, why didn't you bring it? So, okay, we're checking in. We literally just showed up. And we're taking a quick little walk into our spot that we're going to go tomorrow morning and split. We're basically at the spot where we're going to split. I am gonna was going to go up this ridge. And Ray was going to hit the stuff behind me here. And I look over and we got a buck standing about 320. Yeah. 320 yards looking right at us. And I don't have my spotting scope. Again, it happens when you do that. I left it in the truck. It's in the truck. All I have to do is throw my freaking backpack on. We'd have some sweet footage of a nice looking mule deer buck right now. We don't know what he is yet. He hasn't turned, but... Oh, he just turned. Did he? Split on the front. Hey, okay, well, I'm going to check out one second. I want to take a look at this thing. Okay. Got a, got a good look at him there. And he's a, he's a three on top, both sides, no brows. Not what we're looking for, even if he was a four. Definitely not on the first day either. Sorry, I have to apologize about not having my spotting scope with me. It seems like every time you forget it is when you need it. <clears throat> He's still standing there. Not in any rush at all. Just kind of slowly making his way across that burn. But my plan was to go up. He's right there. Right there. And I wanted to go up this tomorrow so safe to say I'm going to do that 
Okay, just got in here. Just got my tube flipped up so I can hear. And I got at least two deer up in the exact same spot that three point was yesterday. Got the spotting scope this time though. So I'm just gonna slowly kind of make my way up parallel on this ridge ahead of me here. Let's see if I can get a bit better look at this because so through the trees, doesn't matter if it was a shooter or not, I couldn't type quite get the shot from here, but. Whew. That is kind of hard there, but there he is. He honestly is, I don't even think he is any distance at all from where he was yesterday evening. Yeah, just a three on top. No back forks. He's got a doe right in front of him. And they haven't moved a flipping muscle. Standing in the same dang spot. Okay. That's the top. Whew. Screwed up and didn't bring the boot chains today. Paid for it getting up this mountain. Oh, it's slippery. Couple fresh tracks. Only seen the doe and three spike <clears throat> so far. Rays right below me on a glass and knob. So far, it's just seen sign. And I'm about to hike that way over these little fingers through this burn. Glass my face off. Maybe spook something up. Who knows? It's beautiful up here. It's so gorgeous. This is what I'm looking at my backdrop. Lots of beautiful stuff to glass, so with any luck, we'll see something. Got about another five hours, six hours, something like that. I'm gonna put this phone away and put my gloves back on and start walking. The old Vancouver Island boy ain't used to this yet. That wind is cold. Hey, checking out until something exciting, hopefully. Okay, well, I found him. They, uh, there was a bunch of older tracks coming down from the burn into this thicker stuff. My plan originally anyway was to go down this thick stuff and head back around to the truck, but here they are. I don't know how good you can see that on camera, but that's littered. Tracks fresh from this morning. They're going down into the thicker, thicker stuff, but... Still not impossible, so I'm gonna quiet up here. Could I really use those boot chains today? God damn. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on stealth my way along here. Snow is not too bad actually, it's a lot crunchier in the open stuff. Is it uh thawed and froze, but this stuff's actually pretty good, so I'm gonna quietly make my way down here and cross those fingers. Oh my goodness, Whew. this is not the day to try and sneak on deer around here. After I checked out there on that fresh, or that trail with tracks all over it, and there was a bunch before I even checked in there. Lots of rub, lots of piss on the ground, lots of sign there in here rubbing, rotten right now. A couple of nice buck tracks. And I jumped, right after I checked out, I jumped a few of them down in the gully and then went up the other side. I went up there after him and I managed to see four of them, all those, and tried to hook my way around up top, but my goodness, it is steep and crappy around here, but they're in here. So I'm gonna cut my losses today and head out. Whew, wait for some heavy, heavy wind or some, some gnarly snow or something to come back in here and hopefully they'll be back down in this gully because they're loving it down in here. But I'm gonna head my way out now. I got a few hours, two, three hours to get out. Hunted out slowly, but I'm in the track zone right now. I got a bunch of them right below me, so I'll mark this and uh, we'll come back in here. Okay. Well, it's uh, morning three. I come up from my bottom walk there and there's a bit of a rub zone down there. 
the bottom of that chute and uh, I got my trail cam set up there. So I came up, sat on the chute for about 15 minutes watching and uh, went back and checked my trail cam. Nothing on my trail cam, even though there's tracks in front of it, which sucks, but came back to the bottom right there and I'm glassing both sides from the bottom. I'm glassing this far side. Glassing, glassing. I turn around and I can see a dark body going across the, this chute here. And, oh fuck, I'm all, getting all stoked. And I glass up there and his, his doe is staring at me already. Oh, shit. So I kind of just, I, once your binocs are up, you gotta stay up. You can't move too much. So I'm eyeing this buck up. Now he's on to me, staring straight down at me. Looking, oh, it's not quite out to his ears, and big front split, smaller back split. And I'm looking, trying to keep steady, and shaking a bit. How oh, big is he? How oh, big is he? I gotta, you don't got too long to make a decision here. And he's just peg staring at me, so I can just see a frontal view. So, I'm like, hey, I gotta take one little step and get a a little bit better of an angle, take one step, and the doe's still staring at me. And uh, and then he turns a little bit, and I can see the front split in the back. And I'm like, oh, if he, was, if he was a wall hanger, I would have knelt, slowly knelt down and, and safety off on him. But I'm looking at him, like, just hoping to go back to feeding and uh, give me a better look so I can make a decision. And, and then the doe slowly starts walking in, and he starts walking in on trying to get a better look at his frame and I may have tried to stop him and nope and they went straight in I'm like oh did I make the right decision on trying to hold out a little bit but that's the trail they went in right there <sighs> all right morning of day four ladies and gentlemen just hiked my way up to this glassy knob it's about eight o'clock right now just before 8 o'clock and I got a doe glassed up there. Took a couple steps and she's out of sight. So where there's one, there's usually more. So I'm going over there. I'm right here right now. Glassing this bottom and glassing all this. And there's probably animals down there too. But I'm going to go with a confirmation animal. Man, it's been slow, slow, slow. Sorry for the lack of deer filming <laughs> but um yeah it's been slow the weather's been starry nights not super cold but another clear day so this kind of hunting i think is better than going in the bush right over there below that snowy stuff right in there there's at least one doe so let's get over there and see what see what's with her all right out <clears throat> all right i made it over can't remember if this was the ridge that I seen the deer on or that one, but I just watched two does go over top of that. I think it is because I came from over there. From that ridge when I was checking out. So I think I'm on it here, but I've seen about ten rubs so far. Don't like that. Pretty gnarly. He's got some bases on him. Trevor's over there, a couple mountains over there. And Ray's, you can barely see if there's a knob way down there. I think that's where Ray is at the moment. I think we're all too far away for radio contact, but it's early, it's still um, 9.30 or something like that. So I'm just gonna shut up and get my butt slowly and quiet as I can up this ridge. Glass everything I can. It seems like they're out this morning still, so. Oh, I was hoping there's me something to fall on those does of that. Here we are again. Morning, day five. Oh, goodness. And you can't come out here without having something sketchy happen with the vehicle. First thing this morning, get in the truck. Everything seems fine. Come out here and go to um, put the brakes on to turn up a road. Nothing. I don't know what happened. We still don't know, but... We're basically going to try and four low first gear on the way out here and use the e-brake, but my brakes are gone. I don't know what happened. 
we backed up and seen a bit of brake fluid sp um, spraying on the road. So I, I don't know how that could have happened because if I did it yesterday on the way, even on the way out of where we were going before we hit pavement, if, if it happened then, I feel like I would have lost all my brake fluid or else at least felt them getting softer at least because we're about 45 minutes hour away from our motel, so. Slow, slow, slow. Trevor's been having some action though. Like I said yesterday, T skis was up there and um, ran into a couple. The second one he jumped said it looked like a shooter. Just didn't give him enough chance kind of back and forth through the trees and he couldn't, couldn't get a good look at what it actually was and couldn't shoot it at all. So anyway, we'll keep doing our thing here and uh, head back down and see if I can get that flipping brake line fixed and get him bled and get back on the road. But okay, until then, later. All right, we got a little two spike down there. You can barely tell, just a little guy. Well, maybe I will hang around here a little bit more. I've sat on this knob a few times, glassing across, and I've never actually seen a deer, so this is the first. <laughs> Looks like he's by himself, but uh. I'll keep an eye out there, I guess, and we'll see. My wind's going exactly to him, so I'm curious to see what happens. Too bad this doesn't zoom in a little better, but there you go. <clears throat> little two spike making his way across. Oh, he's doing a little quicker now. That's always good to see. All right, I'm gonna hang out here and freeze a little bit longer then. Okay. Big rub. I just heard two gunshots coming from Ray and T's direction. I'm up over the, a ridge from them. I got my radio turned up. I'm just waiting for uh, anything to happen. I don't see how it could be anybody else. So I'm just kind of standing here waiting, wondering if I should make my way over there or not. T the buck magnet, that freaking guy. About six years ago, I don't know what happened, he just flipped a switch and that guy has been getting nice bucks consistently every year. And the ones he's been passing up the last few days that he's been seeing were nice too. So if he's pulling the trigger, and same with Ray, he got a 190 last year. So, I mean, none of us, I mean, for me, it's been a while, but I'm still holding up for something nice too. So I'm just waiting for some confirmation on the radio here to see if I, see if he got one or not but some big deer in these parts so <clears throat> i wouldn't be surprised if he got something decent hopefully hopefully so hopefully i'm not jinxing it right now but okay i'm gonna check out and i'll check back in if we got confirmation then we might have some more content coming okay i just got radio confirmation trevor's just coming up over a rise and had a doe and a buck coming towards him and they came real close but as you can see this stuff we're hunting is pretty thick so i guess he uh it was another borderliner shooter as he got past him he took a took a shot and he he's on his tracks right now but he thinks it was a uh, two clean misses so so he's just checking for blood but he's pretty sure he missed him so I'm gonna hook back around towards where I was glassing and seeing that two spike and uh, doe. And then I'm gonna start heading down this ravine and start heading back. But we got weather coming and I gotta get that friggin' truck figured out because right now I got no brakes. You need brakes. So I guess I'm out until something else happens. Oh, okay. This is morning day six. We're getting about 10 o'clock now. Follow the big hammer set of buck tracks up into this stuff here. It's a track mecca. Walk up here. Freaking tracks everywhere. Walks up and just thrashes this. All the crap in the snow. All the limbs broken off. Tracks going that way. Tracks there. Tracks there. Anywhere you can look. Everywhere you look is tracks. I'm gonna off the camera. And I'm just gonna start slowly making my way back through here, put a camera up, not a trail cam, and then we're gonna continue 
and head back because today the crunch is not great but we got weather coming in as we speak so i don't see how i couldn't come back in here this is wild okay not until then all right morning of day seven we uh decided to come up with a buck magnet here himself we got a little fire going we're doing a little glassing this morning he was up here uh, yesterday and seen a couple across the way from us here. Well, that fire's helping good. It's cold. Didn't quite get the preset we were hoping for last night. Little little blanket of snow, but not too much. So we've been here for about an hour so far, and we're gonna we're gonna be here for a few more hours for sure. Yeah. So the fire's necessary. Warm yourself up. Your feet get pretty dang cold spotted two does so far in a draw across the way there and uh there's a bit of a burn up behind us so we're just kind of chilling out and we're going to be doing this for a little bit longer we got some pepperoni fart sticks going down keep us keep us going they can't smell us at 600 they can't smell us at, yeah yeah the farthest up there we seen one yesterday was about 600 yards so 500 is about our tipping point i'd say but anyway, if we do see something, got the spotting scope and the phone scope adapter here, so being me, be able to get a little bit of footage would be awesome. But we need one to step out first. It could happen at any time, any time. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Update. God damn, it's coming through a little spot. Down from here, this is where the buck led me. I was coming uh, down from here. I was about a couple hundred yards below this elevation. Coming through a spot where I had a trail camera set up. I named it Deer Mecca because there was just, there was tracks galore. It was wild. I came through there just pussyfooting my way through there. I shouldn't even be doing this right now. I'm in them right now. Fresh of the deer tracks going. But I just... I was walking through, I got a glimpse of something right ahead of me, 20 feet less, like right in front of me because it's so thick in there, I was ready, but come out, big 170-ish, 165, 170 class, 4x4 at least, right smack dab right in front of me, nothing I could do about it, I tried to wait and he already had me pegged, <clears throat> he turned around and started hopping, side side, up the burn, through and into this, so... I followed him all the way up here. I got onto his tracks and followed him all the way up here. And then he came into another deer mecca. Fresh tracks all over from right now. It's snowing its face off right now. So everything you see that's fresh in snow just happened. There's deer all over through in here right now. I so I lost his tracks. He just went through so many. He went through a couple beds, across a couple tracks. And there's snow's deep enough that the it's sloughing in on itself, so it's impossible to even tell if it's a buck or what. Anyway. He came up into here. I frigged up. Oh, I could have hit. I should. The things you think of afterwards, I sure just hip shot him. He was so close. I probably got a hip shot him, but I just don't want to make a bad shot because those deer that go so fast. I'm not. And I'm not here to do that. So anyway, long story short, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna get hunting. I'm freezing because I was sweating my ass off running after him to see if I can get a glimpse of him as he was going up, but I couldn't. But I gotta get him moving again. We got all day in here so i gotta keep moving keep keep warm okay out until something else exciting happens but that was fucking cool big buck okay okay update he took me up in that shit where i checked in before now I was heading my way back down towards track mecca and I came across looked like three animals, two does and a buck maybe. Got a glimpse of the two does and had my scope. I can barely see through my scope right now, it's just fucked. And then I got a glimpse of him again, I think. I could have shot both the does, I could see them, they were going back and forth through this tiniest little window and I caught movement right below them. 
they went right and he went left. If he followed them, I would have got a shot, but he went left and took me all the fucking way around the mountain. Steep as shit. I'm still on him, right behind him. And it looks now like now he's heading straight up. I just come straight up and I'm about to crest over. I'm about halfway, even about halfway, maybe a little more down the mountain side hill, all the way around it. Now I'm heading back over the top. He's walking again, so I'm gonna give him a sec. Cause I think he's probably gonna get up in there and chill. Head back towards Doze or something like that, but his Doze were just over there, so. Here's his tracks I'm on. They go up, and they go up, and they go up. That means I go up. <sighs> Exciting day though, holy heck. God, I love it when the snow flies. Okay, I'm checking out. I'm gonna get after this thing. We still got lots of time. Um, oh. It's good. <laughs> Safety off, scope covers off, I was ready. And he moves out, comes over hot side. Little three by three. Still cool to see, but fuck, I thought that was him. I see him looking right at me. I was like, you fuck. I was ready for him. If that was him, man, it would have been a done deal. Oh, that was exciting. He was about 25 yards in front of me. All I can really see is oh, not much far. That's not too bad. It's just so gnarly up here. I don't even know where I'm if I'm at the top of the buffer what matter if we show you scenery or not. <clears throat> Update. <sighs> Trevor is about a kilometer, maybe a kilometer and a half over here, the other side of this uh, huge valley for me. And we're kind of glassing each other's sides and I spotted about, well, he could see a few of them too, but about six or seven does mingling around down there and just came up out of this draw, this nice buck right on one of those asses told Trevor whereabouts it is and he he's seen him so he's in a really nice looking 4x4 kind of like another buck that he got called Medusa and uh right when he was trying to get a rest he's about 370 yards from him he said the buck bedded he's still bedded I can see him right there exciting I don't know if you can tell my hands are shaking a bit Woo! holy that was crazy I wish I could have had my camera rolling for through all that, but I was too much, too much going on. I had to keep in my binoculars 100% of the time, but we got him. Trevor got him. That was the coolest thing. Group effort on this one. One second. Some blow down to go through, but oh God. Ah, okay. Okay. Get my fucking gun up here. Anyway, seen about five or six does kind of milling around the bottom of this burn above this little timber patch. It's like, there's got to be a buck in there. There's got to be a buck in there. Sure enough, well, another one comes out in the bottom with a buck hot on her butt. I called Trevor. Woo! I can hear him yelling down there. I got a ways to go, but anyway. Oh. I seen him, told Trevor, he's right below him there. Oh, Buck followed the does around for a while. And then uh, he bedded down. So got Trevor into a point where he finally seen him. And I uh, confirmed that he was a nice looking four by four. We're getting into our trip pretty hard here. At day eight right now or day nine, something like that. Don't have too, too much longer, so 
but it sounds like he's a pretty good buck by the by the sounds of it anyway he got on him and he had him about 370 yards but from where he was looking down he was looking through a lot of crap so it took him quite a while oh down it took him quite a while i gotta make sure i'm going the right way here yeah to wait and we wanted to wait for him to stand so we waited 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 i can't even feel my feet right now they're freaking ice burst anyway he finally stood and he got one shot off and he missed him i think i'm pretty sure he missed him his first shot so we started coming side hill side hill and the buck went down about 60 yards and stood there so i was telling him where he was what way he was facing whether he was looking at him or not and he slowly crept into another spot and he got a shot at him didn't make that great a shot i don't think the first one he started going across the face following a doe and then he stood on the edge right before he was going to go down to a big crap ravine and i would have lost him and he stood there long enough that i got to talk to trev talk trev into i can hear him down there Woo yeah so i talked trev into him best i could seeing seeing the deer stand there seeing trevor coming up the ridge on the face and i was like he's straight down to the right 80 yards you just can't quite see him finally i see him the buck goes down tell trevor where he is he gets on his tracks he, i hear a gunshot then i see the buck coming through the bit of open spot to the right and i tell him which way he's going he gets on him again and the buck's hurt really bad this time embedded down so i talked him into it one more time one more shot and he bucked down he's down trevor's hooting and hollering i got a ways to go and we're way the frig back in here it's like two o'clock so we got some work to do we're gonna get up there and get some pictures and then we're gonna get our backpacks filled as best we can might have to hang some meat up and come back to for it tomorrow but the next thing you see it's gonna be a freaking sweet buck haha <laughs> okay i gotta get my camera down here so i can i gotta start traversing and getting his yell so i can go the right direction but i'm gonna be in the crap pretty soon but hey stay tuned muley trip 2021 at least one success all right okay Sorry, I just had to go through a sea of blowdowns. Congratulations, Trev. That was so cool. There he is. Nice buck. Give me some dimension. Oh yeah, that'll do. Nice buck. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Not a booner, but. No, not, not a booner, but that's a good healthy buck. And yeah. that was so cool. That was so cool. How we talked to, I was at the top of that. I was on that knob right there. Glassing from there. Look, he's got these funky weird eye guards. Oh, weird. Look at, this is a gnarly one. Rubbins all over his horns. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> I can't believe got we it done. got that done. Jesus. It was, like, seeing after you shot, and he's, I'd seen him limping and going after that doe, and I could see you just coming through there. I was like, go through that draw, and you'll be on the same face as him. And he was just down to the right, standing by the only unburnt tree there. He's just standing there. And I could see you coming. I'm like, you can't be more than, like, 100 yards. Like... But again, like it's the same with, with when you're guiding and you're talking um, guides and their guests into animals. From what you see compared to what they see is so different. I'm looking from the top, they're looking down, and now that I'm in this, it's like, holy crap. It's so tough to see anything. Well, this is weird. Like I got him right in the engine room. It took him a while to die. In the front shoulder. It took him quite a while to die. And then I had to... We're going to have to set this thing up and get some sweet pictures, yeah. but then we're going to have to get to work because it's going to be gotta, dark here in about three hours. He's trying to have a trifecta front there. Is he? Yeah. That's awesome. Sweet. Nice work, Trev. Woo! Good job, buddy. Okay, well, <clears throat> we'll check out here and we'll set up and get some pictures and then we got to get to work. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, Trevor. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Not bad, eh? Yeah, that's awesome. I knew he was, I knew he had a, I couldn't see any splits or forks, but I knew he had a good frame and he, and he looked decent. Do you? Yeah, it was bad. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I watched him bed down and then seeing you spook him out of his bed and he goes again. I'm like, seeing it all from friggin' bird's eye. That's so cool. Nice, nice. Nice moves, Trev. We got some work to do. Now we got Same some flipping time. work to do. And I'm well, we got our backpacks today, so that's good. Both of them. Yeah. Okay, we're checking out for now. All right. Load it up. Deer in the back. Got the rack. Whew, pack it heavy. We did it. We're not done yet. We're just having them on our backs now. We still got a long ass way to go. And like she's fading fast. Oh, what's this deer tracks? Jesus. Whew. We might get one on the way out. Stay tuned. Okay. Our last ridge is within yardage. Here comes Trev. We came from that way back there. We had no idea. We were walking ourselves into an absolute sea of blowdowns. Just a sea of them. Scaling trees, falling. It was super fun. No good. Oh god. No good at all. So, you see sweat. That's not snow, that's sweat. Oh baby. Oh. We're doing it though. We got oh, my. Yeah, That's our last hide land to go over. Yeah, and it's steep is steep down to the truck, but we should be able to see at least something. Hopefully, I think it's straight down right after that. But we're happy. Hey Trev. Oh, that's Oh man. Oh. I decided to wear my wool gear today. That wasn't the greatest idea. It doesn't breathe too well. Yeah, you got full wool gear on. God, I was stupid. Fleece and a wool gear. It's dumb. Doesn't matter. Okay. Where's Ray the deer packer? Yeah. Oh. He's over there chasing bucks still, waiting for us. Okay. Give me a light one. Yeah. Checking out. That was a pack from hell. Oh my God. Way over the top of the mountain is where we got that deer. Not the truck, but the road we're looking for is in sight. Every step, that freaking ravine was horrible. Every step, your foot, you think you're hitting ground. No, it slides. What a freaking quad workout. We're on our ridge. Finally, don't not in the ravine anymore. And we're making it down. We got about 10 minutes until it's pitch black, so I'd say we timed that pretty decently, but... Oh my God, we're pooched. We're pooched, I need some water. Hey Trev. Okay. Checking back in to another morning. That pack out was gnarly. Trez buck there. We got it all back. One trip. Now we're back in here again. New timber spot. Perfect day. Snow is light and fluffy. It's still falling. You can probably see that on camera. It was coming down a lot heavier a little while ago, but got myself way up in here. I'm on old tracks. Snowed on, but lots of them. And I'm just making my way towards where Trevor went up another ridge farther away from me by a couple hundred yards, four, five, six, seven hundred yards, something like that. And he was saying he had fresh tracks right now on the road. One of them rubbed a tree and they're heading into the bush towards me. So I'm gonna start heading towards him. You gotta find the tracks in this fresh snow. You gotta find where they're hanging. There's gonna be little pockets of them in here. And that's the important part. I'm around this stuff right now. You know, I'm, only, I'm moving slow because you always got a chance of seeing something moving by you. <clears throat> Bucks moving, all that kind of stuff. But I haven't cut one fresh track yet. And I've, been in here for a couple hours now so I'm gonna start heading his way I got a little ravine to go through and I'll be on that other other side so I'm gonna start heading that way and uh, see what happens 
we're stuck up here right now. Um, I can't believe what's happening. All three of our directions home are gone. Coquihalla, Fraser Canyon, Duffy Lake Road, all gone. I feel so bad and my condolences to all the families and, and everything that are being affected by this. I cannot believe what's happening down there. We're up here kind of just out of it, quite a bit north of it, but we're, we're, we're out of it, um, fortunately enough. But at the moment, we are stuck. I guess we're just going to do our thing in here and keep hunting away, but wow. I've never seen anything like that before, so we'll check out for now. We'll keep on stealthing our way through here and see if we can get lucky. All right, I'm out. Well, that's a beautiful picture right there. Sad to still walk out to me. But 20 yards away, just hanging out. Nothing with her. But the old ear flick, and I think she's okay with me. I don't think you're used to seeing people in here. Totally different spot this morning. I got another doe bedded down on the other side of the ravine. Right there. I'm kind of pinned down right now. I gotta get past her. Down to my edge. She's kind of chilling right there. Beauty doe. Oh, where'd she go? Right behind me. Okay, we're checking in. Day 13 now or something like that. I just had to circle around this knob. Some waist deep snow. Coming into the same little timber patch that had that interaction with that big buck that I had on trail camera there. And coming to retrieve my camera. I'm not gonna leave it here for the year done that before and we didn't even go back to that hunt spot and it's been I have two cameras out now that have been there for about five six years I don't think we're ever gonna see them again but you know these are one of my good cameras so I'm gonna go grab it I had good tracks about three quarters way up the hill I'm sort of out of them now the snow is just crazy deep around here some old tracks but nothing like what I came through the track line is lower so I'm gonna slowly make my way through this mecca Grab my camera, relive my F up, and I'm gonna slowly make my way down. Ray came up about halfway. We started going to tracks, fresh tracks, real hard, about foot, foot and a half of snow. And he went up on a side hill and he's on a bit of a glassing perch now. And as we speak, I believe he's watching a couple does and some variations of bucks uh, from smaller two spike to a big heavy two spike and something else that you can kind of see moving around in there. So he's just waiting, see if anything will come up and pose a shot. They're about 350, 400 from him. And uh, I think that's within range for him for sure. So fingers crossed I hear a gunshot down there, but oh, it's freezing. Impossible to sweat, which is good. I don't like sweating. But anyway, side checking again and uh, fingers are still crossed. Day 13. Welcome to our last morning, I believe. Day 15, 14, 15, something like that, I don't know. Straight toil. Oh man, it's been a season. I don't even think there's any much other hunters around here right now. They've all gone home. But the, the roads, a couple of roads have been opened up to take us back home. So I think we're gonna take the chance or take the opportunity and head her. We've done I'm satisfied with uh with the effort. This season was awesome. Honestly, it was it was great. No matter what, we're up here, you know, my dad and me and my brother get to hunt together. We've been doing this every year since I was thirteen or fourteen. So it's uh, pretty dang exciting. I love it no matter what. 
um, cherry on top. Even I got to witness from a tall vantage point and talk my brother into that buck that he got. Seeing the whole thing play out in front of me was uh, pretty unreal. Never forget that. Uh, yeah, ran into a nice one myself. And, uh, you know, you need uh, not one or two or three stars to line up. I don't even know how many have to line up in a first situation to happen like that. But a lot of them do. So, anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Head up my trail. I still got about another, I don't know, 45 minutes or well, half an hour. Something like that. I should be able to get to where I uh, side hill up. And I'm going to do a bit of glassing. If the weather permits, we got fresh snow on the ground in the trees. It's a little dark to see, but it's snowing on me right now. So hopefully we got a bit, bit of visibility. If not, I'll go in the bush after him. So checking out. Uh, if the if this is it, if this is the ending, maybe we'll do another check out. But if not, thanks for watching. And uh, I think we're on to either some more blacktail when we get back home. Probably blacktail for sure when we get back home. And we'll be back in the sheds. Okay.